telegram after a few days that my father passed away. A few days later came a telegram that they killed him. If my and asked my mother if she would like to have the ashes. My mother didn't know what to, to do. So we didn't have no rabbi in town. So she called up a rabbi in the next town, in the town. And the rabbi said, don't ask for the ashes, because in case he's still alive, they won't kill him, they're sending you that. They will send you the ashes. That's all what I hear from my father. My mother, we had a sister, she was married, she had a baby boy, she lived in Sussex. Varemba, Varemba, Shabir, Shabir Town, Benji, Sosnavit, Katowice, Oberstein, German border. So she went, she lived in Sosnavit, and she went there because she had a baby boy there, my sister, so to visit. She never came back, she stayed there. What happened with my brother, I do not know. I never heard of it. Supposedly, they said he went to Benjamin, got married, I do not know. I left with my sister. She was a sister, a brother, a sister, and me. So with my sister, I mean, that's when they said, they called it for Judenrein. Judenrein means clean up the town from the Jews. No more Jews in town. They called this they named it Juden Rhein. So they went, they, they took us, yeah, we were hiding for two or three nights at the Polish place, but naturally, he was afraid and we were afraid. They called 15 Jewish families. Where is, where is that Kutner? Where is Kutner? Where, where are they? So we had to give ourselves up. 
So we give ourselves up, and they send us to Zavirche, it's a bigger town. And again, we stood, well, as you must have seen pictures, how we how we stood with the suitcases, whatever it is. And they said, left or the links, right or the left. They sent me to the right, they separate me from my sister, and my sister sent to the left. They left her yet, because sewing, to, to, be, to sew uniforms for their sets in the Gestapo. Myself, they sent to Marstadt by Breslau, Kreis Olau. We started building, I came over there with grass green, nothing there. And we started building a firma Krupp, you must have heard of it, K-R-U-P, they have toasters, and, uh, huge, huge beds, probably I'm lucky to have them. I was there working 12 hours a day, from 6 to 6, summer or winter. An hour to work, walking, an hour back from work. They taught me how to be an iron worker. So I was an iron worker. <coughs> we needed so much cement in gas, and the food was a quarter of a pound of bread a day and a quart of soup. If the soup was with spinach, you could break the tea. The cent was in it, a lot of cent. Anyway, we needed that so much cement, so every week <coughs> came a railroad car with 32 railroad cars cement, and each railroad car was 600 sets cement. When do you think we unload this uh, railroad car? After 6 o'clock in the night. We had to stay in a globe, still be two railroad cars, 600 sacks cement in each car. We came home at 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. The soup was called, the bread, the quarter of a pound bread, we swallowed the bread, we swallowed the, 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 the soup, and if you didn't eat it up, the, the bread, if you want to leave yourself a little few crumbs, <coughs> next morning, maybe it was stolen. So we needed a lot, and we were no food all day long except water. Water we had, because we were working with cement, the country, we had to have water. The next morning, we came home, I told you, 12 o'clock, and we went to sleep, I mean, 1 o'clock, 4 till we up, 5 o'clock, back to work, 6 o'clock, we had to <coughs> this was Markstedt. I was there a year and a half. I have sinus in the drives me out. And 